All right, Krista, I'm so happy that we get to chat today. And the first question that I have for you is kind of a classic one. How did you get into franchising? Yeah, um, I actually was recruited to a firm to help build out their franchise sales team. So I started entry level. We started with a team of six, built it to over 72 in under five years and went from 30 locations to 1500. And That's it was a fun cool. time. I got to oversee you. <laughs> everything west of Texas, <laughs> helped mm -hmm. open over 30 states for franchise for that franchise owner. So that's how I got into it. And I, I kind of just fell in love with the world of franchising from there. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so you definitely have some experience kind of on the other side of the franchising equation. Um, how do you feel that your past experience helps you now as a franchise coach? So having been on the franchise or side, I know we're there coming from and approaching things. I am, I understand franchising as a whole. I also owned a franchise with that company. So I've been a franchise owner, semi-absentee, full-time. I've, I've seen it all in franchising. Yeah. Um, and what I loved about becoming a coach is I'm not representing a company, I'm representing the person. Mm -hmm. When you're on the franchise or side, if someone's not a fit for that business, it's kind of like, good luck, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, what does this want? Um, whereas a consultant, it's like, hey, we'll, we'll find the right one. Let's find the perfect match. And we know all the questions we need to ask to make sure we get there. And I've been in their shoes. I very intimately understand how you're feeling as you're going through the process. So I've done it myself and it's right. a big leap to take on yourself and open a business. So, um, but I, I think it's one of the best ways to get into business for yourself. So I'm a huge advocate for it. I just love being on this side of it, helping people. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So talking about clients, um, what would you say your favorite part about working with clients is? Oh, I love meeting people and kind of hearing where they're coming from, what their goals are uh, every day. Some, everyone's unique. So it's really fun working with unique individuals every day. Um, it's never the same. <laughs> we have a formula for helping you find the right one, but it's never actually the same day, which I love. Um, right. My favorite thing though, is when we're kind of at the end, we've mm -hmm. compared three or four really good options. And the client comes out of discovery going, wow, this one's definitely the one, literally no questions asked. It makes so much sense. Um, and that's probably the best feeling in the world. Cause I, I, I didn't get to do that before <laughs> where it's like, wow, we compared so many things side by side and truly found the best one. Um, that's, that's an amazing feeling. And then helping them get across that finish line of I'm really going to do this. It, yeah. I mean, that's just the most rewarding part of all of this is how, helping people actually get into business. So, yeah, that's yeah. incredible. I think a lot of people have that kind of aha moment, which is really cool. Yeah. The next question I wanted to ask, why should someone who is considering owning a franchise work with Francoach? I would, I'm like a picture perfect example of that. Uh, you <laughs> don't know what you don't know <laughs> and what's out there. There are thousands of franchises in the US in over 70 industries. It is impossible to know them all, know what they're offering, yeah. actually know what your day-to-day -day will be. Everything can be a shiny object. That yeah. doesn't mean that's the shiny object for you. Okay. And there's no way you on the outside can actually find out all of that information. Mm -hmm. You would have to go do all the legwork we do, which would be hundreds and hundreds of hours of due diligence, okay. even just on 10 brands. So mm -hmm. it's extremely limiting to try to find these things yourself. Um, and I didn't know this world existed. Like I, I was working for one company. I only knew that industry and I knew those franchises. I I knew McDonald's existed. I didn't, I didn't think everyone would look at McDonald's. It was way too expensive. Mm -hmm. But you kind of go to these big names and you literally don't know what's out there. So yeah. the reason I even found this is I was wanting to get into a new business, diversify my portfolio. And I worked with a consultant mm -hmm. who really opened my eyes to what was out there. Yeah. And um, they said, hey, with your experience, you could genuinely do what I do. And not a lot of people have your background to make it so easy for someone. <laughs> like you really understand franchising. So I kind of end my own lesson in this. <laughs> Work with a consultant. It was the best thing I ever did. And I, I found the right thing for me. And it was not <laughs> any of the franchises I looked at initially. So it's, it's a great process and it works. Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, totally. That's awesome. I love that answer. And then finally, what nugget of advice do you have for uh, soon to be franchise owners like your clients? Absolutely. So my biggest thing is learn from others so you don't make the same mistakes. <laughs> Why make mistakes someone else already did, which is part of franchising too. They've already learned all their mistakes, learn from them. Um, so my biggest thing is once you've executed the agreement and you're getting ready to launch your business, go find the top five performers in that brand, become their best friend and ask them, what did you, what do you do now that you didn't do before that you wish you had done? 
yeah. you will go down the learning curve so much faster because you're utilizing other people's experience and knowledge to not go through the same mishaps. Okay. You're still a business owner. You're going through a learning curve. You're going to make mistakes, yeah. but use your resources and take that initiative. They were in your shoes too. And everybody wants to win in this, in business and in being franchisees together. So uh, take advantage of that. I, I, that's the biggest thing to me that if you could talk to all five weekly before you launch, you're going to rock and roll and you'll do so much better than you. That's awesome. I love that piece of advice. And I, I sincerely hope that everybody who's watching this takes that piece of advice. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <Fingers crossed. laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> well, Krista, those are my questions about franchising and about Fran Coach. I do have a couple just for fun questions to give yeah, a little sure. behind the scenes. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> glimpse at life of Krista. So yeah. first of all, we want to know about your brush with fame. So tell me about the most famous person you've ever met. And of course, we're going to need the story behind it. Yeah. Uh, so I grew up in LA. <laughs> So I worked at In-N-Out Burger in high school. Quite a few famous people would come through the drive-thru. Oh <laughs> uh, biggest one everyone would know at the time was um, John Mayer. And I only want to say great things about him. <laughs> that was not the meaning I expected. <laughs> Very different in person than watching him in concert. <laughs> but he loves our cheeseburgers. He put the messiest picture of himself with a cheeseburger in my In-N-Out drive-thru line on Instagram. <laughs> Like it doesn't make it look good, but that's cool. <laughs> uh, so he was, it was, it was fun running into him. And then uh, probably my other favorite was Regina King. She went through the drive-through also, and she had her nephews in the back, and she was turning around, like disciplining them because they were acting up the way I would as an aunt. Right. So I was cracking up. I was like, oh, you know those pages in Us Weekly where they're like stars, they're just like us. I was like, oh my god, sure, and I have the same like aunt voice. <laughs> like telling you to knock it off. They really are uh, just like us. Yeah. yeah, ran into quite a few people. They would sign my hat, things like that. So it was a good time. That is really cool. I I sincerely hope you still have that hat. Yes, yes. And then, uh, gosh, I was eight and we were at a hotel with my grandparents and Mike Myers was there and I didn't know who he was. I was too young to know Austin Powers or anything like that. We swam with the guy for like two hours, having a blast. And then we got out of the pool and my grandparents were like, Mike Myers is really nice. And then I saw Austin Powers like four years later and I'm like, oh my gosh. I got out of the pool with that guy, like with my siblings for hours. We had no right. idea. And he was just That's talking incredible. to me. So, yeah. Yeah. That, Christy, you have a good track record of meeting famous. I know. People. You spend more time around you. Yeah, because I grew up there. That's all. LA yeah. kind of happens. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have one final question for you, and it is Fran Coach specific. So, okay. which Fran Coacher would you like to switch hair with? This is going to sound so weird, but Luke has a full head of hair. He really does. Thick and lush. Uh, so, if I was going to give up my thick, full head of hair, I'd probably trade it for his. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, or, or actually yours. You have a good head of hair too. You can know, avoid Tim and, Tim and everyone else. Because <laughs> they told me about their hair situations. <laughs> like, yeah, it's weird. That's where I go with. Yeah. I love it. So are you taking, just to clarify, you're taking just Luke's hair? Or are you also getting his full beard? No, we're doing just the hair. Just the hair. So I just, yeah, it grows him thick. He's not, you know, no balding anywhere, nothing crazy. He's got yeah. thick hair. It's what I work with. I, I'd be used to it. <laughs> I don't know what to do with thing out hair that's not really working, but that'd be confusing yeah. to me. So <laughs> I would take his. <laughs> no, I hear that. Luke has a great head of hair. Um, yeah. Awesome, Krista. Well, this was such a great conversation. Thanks for chatting with me.